Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. This video is similar to the previous video. It's going to be focusing on this um, ESP8266 weather station project, which I'm currently doing. And I have made some changes from the previous video. And the most apparent change is the change of the OLED display. Previously, I was using this 0.96 inch um, blue OLED display, but I swapped it out with a 1.3 inch white OLED display and I really like the white compared to the blue I think it stands out more from the black background and they both work on the I2C interface so 4 pins VCC ground serial clock and serial data so it's pretty much the same in terms of the wiring but with some OLEDs you need to be careful for example this OLED the VCC and the ground um, is in a different configuration the VCC on this OLED is on the left but on this 1.3 inch OLED, the VCC is on the right. And I have added another sensor. So not only does this now display the time and the current date, but the temperature, humidity, and pressure as well. And the sensor I'm using to display those, um, uh, the data is this BME280 sensor. And it has um, a chip on board which can um, detect the temperature, the humidity, the pressure, as well as the altitude. And um, with this code, I can then turn it into um, readable readings. So the temperature is in Celsius, the humidity is in percent, and the pressure is in Pascals. And I can also display the altitude in meters above sea level, but as you can see, it's getting a little bit crowded um, with information on this screen. So what I plan to do next is actually hook up this capacitive t touch sensor and what this will do is act as a button. So whenever I press this, it will change the screen to display different data. So in terms of the sensors, which I may add later, I may want to add this dust sensor. So with this dust sensor can give a good reading of um, the dust and air quality. So I would really like to add that to the weather station. And I was also thinking about maybe adding some kind of gas sensor, but I'm not too sure which gas sensor I have right now. Um, I know I have an MQ3, but that isn't really for um, normal gases. It's meant for alcohol. Um, and I have this gas sensor is the MQ2. I believe this is for gases such as methane and um, propane, but I may need to purchase a carbon uh, dioxide sensor, which senses the concentration of carbon dioxide in uh, parts per million. So that would be a really cool addition to the weather station. And yeah, with this button, I can press it and it will take me through to another display with other findings such as the altitude as well as um, readings from the dust sensor and by the way this dust sensor is from seed studio I believe and this BME 280 sensor which is it's a uh, barometric pressure sensor it's from DF robot and with this sensor it uses the SPI as well as the I2C interface but I am using it with the I2C interface right now and it makes things really easy to hook up as you can see it's also four pins VCC ground zero clock and zero data and in terms of the pinout from this connector I hooked it up to some jumper wires some male to male jumper wires and into the bedboard and as you can see it's similar to um, the pins on the OLED display both of these the uh, devices, the OLED display, as well as the sensor works with the I2C interface, so that makes everything so easy to hook up. And um, in the code, which I will show you now, and it's also linked in the description for you to um, download or upload for if you want to make your own weather station. I will now explain some bits of the code that I modified to actually um, use the code with this 1.3 inch OLED display as the drivers which are on. This display is the SH1106 driver, whereas this display is the SSD1306 driver. So I had to make some small changes as well as, um, you know, add more things for me to use the sensor and to display its readings on 
this OLED display. So this is the current project as it is right now. I do plan on improving on it, which I will make an update on a future video in, I don't know, maybe a week. But along the way, there will be other videos. Um, and I do plan on uploading a Duino coin video as well um, in the upcoming days. So right now, I will get on the computer and I will take you through a tour of the current code which I have. All right, so here are the two codes. Uh, the left-hand code is the previous code of the ESP8266 clock without all of the temperature, humidity, and um, pressure readings on the OLED display. And the right-hand side is the current code with the BME280 sensor, um, sensor attached as well as all of the readings on the OLED display. And firstly, in order to change from the 0.96 inch OLED display to the 1.3 inch OLED display, I had to change the declaration of the OLED. So previously, this line was different. Instead of the SH1106 driver, as you can see over here, mentioned it had the SSD 1306 driver. So in order to get the code working on a one, the 1 1.3 inch OLED, I had to change this to the SH1106 um, declaration over here. And in terms of uh, the changes from the previous code to the current code, there wasn't really a whole lot of different things to do, but um, I did have to spend some time trying to integrate everything and making sure uh, it's all set up on the OLED display. So at the top, you can see with this current code, two more libraries are added, the DF robot BME280 library as well as the wire library for um, the data to come in to the Arduino to read. And a lot of the things are similar. Um, these statements are all the same from the previous code. And these three lines of code over here are unique to the BME280 sensor. It's basically for the sensor to work and it's part of setting it up. And some more things over here related to the BME280 sensor. Um, on my website, I actually did a full tutorial on how to set up this BME280 sensor. And you, I'll put the link to the description. It's basically I'm setting it up just to output the data on the serial monitor. But this time it's on the LED display. And the library which I'm using for the uh, for the 1.3 inch OLED is the U8X8 lib library and it makes things really easy to use. And if we go down to the actual printing of things to the OLED display, you know, it, it's quite simple to use. There's a whole documentation and a lot of um, support for this library. If you search it up online, you can find the different fonts um, they use as well as the other lines of code which you can use to make it work. And here is something which I uniquely added to this project. And essentially, this is how it works. So the data from the BME280 sensor is coming in over here, as you can see, temperature, pressure, altitude, and humidity. It's coming into these variables over here. And what I wanted to do was to actually shorten it down because the raw data which comes in without changing anything, it has around, some of it has two decimal places, some of it has four decimal places. So in order to make the readings actually fit the display and to make it compact as possible and to make it visually pleasing, I cut down on the decimal places and to make it more simple. And firstly, I had to declare all of these variables as char variables, as you can see over here. And the integers as you, in the square brackets are um, the rough size of it. Um, I didn't know what to put. A lot of people recommend seven, but you know, I just put five or nine. I don't think it really matter, matters that much, but you're probably safe if you put seven. And what I also wanted to do is add the units behind the, um, the values of data. So for um, temperature, it's Celsius, so it's C. For humidity, it's percent. And for pressure, it's Pascal's PA. So these are also char variables that I've um, added, which I will explain now. And so this, so this line of code over here, uh, I will take it as an example for the temperature because for humidity and pressure, it basically works the same. How it works is I take the raw reading, so from the float, and I say that it will have a minimum size of three, the minimum width of three. So that means this includes the um, the 
units of numbers basically. So with three, I can have maybe 12.2 or 56.7, anything, you know, with, there's three numbers involved. And the one over here is for the one, uh, one unit after the decimal place. You can change this to two and other things, but if you change this, you should also change uh, the width. And this is basically the output where I want to store this data. So this is why I created these char variables for the different uh, data sets over there. And strcat, so this command is, is quite helpful. It's for me to add the unit after the value of data. So it combines the temp underscore buff, which is the data that I've simplified down, as well as the cell buff, which is the unit. So it will look like, you know, something like 20.3c because I've added both the data as well as the units one after each other. And the same thing is applied to the humidity as well as the pressure. The pressure and the humidity, as you can see, there's no units after the decimal places. And f as well as for the pressure, it's instead of just three units overall, the width is five. And this is the font I used for displaying all of the data. And other than that, everything is the same. And I've also decided that I won't be putting the day on the OLED display, just because I I really wanted to make it as compact as possible, and putting the day would take up extra space, which would um, disable me from putting other readings, which I feel is more important on the OLED display. So I removed the uh, lines of code for the day completely, which you can see over here on the left hand side. And other than that, nothing else has really changed massively. Um, I w basically worked for a few hours to integrate the code for the BME280 with the code for the previous ESP8266 clock and of course upgraded to the 1.3 inch OLED. And for the next video of this project, um, you could expect that I will probably be adding the dust sensor as well as the capacitive touch sensor in order to essentially switch pages for me to see different data displayed on the OLED. I hope you enjoy watching this video. The code for this conversion will be placed in the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope I see you on the next video.